Welcome to Two Wheels Extra, your weekly biking colour supplement. On the programme this week, two scooters, both with names like something out of a computer game, the Sonic and the Slider. And if you're in the market for a scooter but want something a little alternative, guest presenter Louise Brady checks out a scooter auction. And later on in our fashion slot, I'm going to brave the elements as we check out waterproofs. Thanks, Fran. You know how when you find yourself explaining once again just why you choose to ride a bike, you probably end up talking about the whole experience, all the effects of it, the speed, the comradeship of biking, the feel of the bike and probably somewhere the sound of the bike. It's great but it's not always easy to get the whole thing right. Maybe you love the sound of Harley Davidson but you want the performance of a sports bike and perhaps the looks of something exotic like a Ducati Monster. Well there is something out there for you and it's a bit unusual and it's this, the Buell. I know, it might look like the result of asking the A-Team to build a bike out of a Harley engine and a load of old toasters, but Buell in fact have a long and proud history of making racing bikes from hog engines. And apart from that engine and the belt drive to the rear wheel, it's very much a case of not Californian laid-back cruising, but urban hooliganery. What's surprising is that despite its mean and moody looks, when you get up close, it's actually not really all that big, but maybe it's like a street fighter when it's the really small, vicious ones that you have to look out for. But let's see. It might look like a mean, moody monster, but it's just a big pussycat once you get going, apart from being quite a lot smaller than you expect. It's certainly not frightening to ride. It's narrow, there's a low centre of gravity, so it's very flickable and easily manoeuvrable. There's huge dollops of torque from that massive V-twin engine, which makes it, again, very easy to ride. Very quickly, you'll decide which is your favourite part of the rev range. I'm talking purely from the point of view of noise here. And leave it there. Enjoy it all day. No need to worry about changing gear for hills or corners. That torque will pull you through. The brakes are superb, there's certainly more than enough. It's not that heavy a bike to stop anyway. The front brake particularly will let you know exactly what's happening at the wheel. Ah. Now that seat whew, is not very comfortable. It's also a typical Buell feature. It's not actually a single seat because there's room for a little tiny passenger here and we've got pillion foot pegs as well. So it is, strictly speaking, a two-seater. That's just one of a lot of typical Buell features though because there's other things like the very narrow plastic tank here the upside down forks, the very steep rake of the steering as well, which gives it that quick turn in. Huge but very narrow disc on the front there. And then a very typical Buell over on the other side, the very wiggly complicated exhaust system and the silencer and suspension slung underneath the bike so you've got maximum clearance when you're cornering. In fact, it's basically as though the bike is just there, just the bare minimum, so that you can carry the engine around with you. It's the complete opposite of the huge, great, fat, chrome-laden Harley-Davidsons that the engine itself comes from. A Harley engine certainly isn't something you'd automatically associate with pin-sharp handling, but the Buell will turn in as sharply and quickly as any sports bike when you come to the twisty bits. The more you ride it, the more you realise it's all about torque and that glorious noise bouncing off walls and windows. The more I've ridden the Buell, the more I've realised perhaps after all it is about cruising. It's just not the Californian laid-back style. It's meaner than that, more moody than that, kind of forward-leaning, urban cruising. Still cruising all the same. No doubt about it, the Buell is for people who like to stand out from the crowd and believe me, when they hear this thing coming, the crowd will be looking your way. Price-wise, well for this second-hand one on an R plate, you'll pay about five, five and a half thousand pounds. New, between six and a half and seven and a half, depending upon the model and spec. So it is a viable alternative to the likes of the Ducati Monsters. For me though, you can keep your Latin temperament. I'd far rather have a good old bit of American heavy metal any day. So I'll take the Buell, thank you. In our biking fashion parade this week, we're looking at waterproof oversuits. The kind that you just slip on over your gear. Zip and go. And we're looking at loads of them, so you're ready. Let's go. 
a rainy day can be depressing enough as it is without wearing drab, miserable clothes. So why not wear something a bit multicoloured? <coughs> and a little brighter. Cheer yourself up. <laughs> and the rest of the world, probably. And it's got the name written on it, just so you know what they are. And they're 39.99. Tray sheep with belt. Thank you. And this is a Frank Thomas two-piece. It's 49.99 and apparently very easy to put on. Let's just check that out. Easy so far. Oh, there we go. Nice little zip. It does actually have a bag. And a nice little belt to nip your waist in. Oh, nice. Kind of middle of the range, this one, the Aqua fighter suit, $49.99 basic but it's got everything on it including a snazzy little collar with a nice comfortable feel on it so it's not too sharp on your little face. Mine has, has been pointed out possibly not the thing to wear next to a wasp's nest. Could get a shock. I know, I know it's a bit big but it's warm and uh, it's 99.99 and it's so expensive because it's padded so it's nice and warm for those commuters. Now, I don't know if you've ever actually worn one of these things, but if you've ever, it's dramatic, isn't it, found yourself hiding under a bridge trying to put your waterproof suit on, you'll know it can be a bit of a task. Inevitably, it's never in the best of conditions, i.e. it's raining. This is from Triumph. It's the chevron suit. It's going to cost you 75 notes, so it's not cheap, but we lift up this central flap, insert the zip. I haven't had to pull it over my soggy riding boots, which is the nastiest part of putting one of these things on. Simple as that. Zip in the other side, zip it down all the way to the bottom. Bit of Velcro there. Velcro the tape bits up. Nice and dry. Thank you very much. And in double quick time, show me an easy way of doing that. Do you know what, Rich? Mm -hmm. I think we need to test it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> And here we are in Sotheby's Auction House in central London with all the glitz and the glamour of one of those celebrity auctions. But we're not just auctioning anything. We've got eight celebrity designed scooters and matching helmets. I don't understand what's going on here. Piaggio specially designed Vespa scooters with kind of a funky or a furry feel and they were launched to raise money for the charity Action on Addiction. There were eight celebrity scooters on auction this evening and each one was individually designed by the celebrity themselves including pop stars, photographers, authors and even a film star. Okay, so the idea is, you pick up the booklet, you flick through, check out eight scooters, see which one you'd look best on, come down here with your credit card and bid away. And what about this funky little number, designed and autographed by all the band members of the Steps, which could make it very appealing to the younger generation. It's finished in white pearlescent with luminous footprints and, of course, those famous autographs. White, leather look seat, mm, it's going to get very dirty. It's OK, and you're certainly going to see it around town. But I've seen one that's much more practical. Now this one's more like it. This is the Helen Fielding scooter. Now in case you don't know, Helen Fielding is the author, the famous author of the Bridget Jones Diaries. Now this is a real girl's scooter. Let's just run through what it's got. Okay, we've got a nail varnish holder, hairbrush, full manicure kit, imports, of course, you never know you're going to meet up with traffic lights, curling tongs for when you're having a bad hair day, and of course you've got to have some on-board sounds. If it's good enough for a Honda Goldwing, then it's good enough for a Piaggio Vespa. Um, if you are a bit short-sighted, 
There's also a contact lens holder, and if you're really having a bad case of road rage and you need to light up, the alternate. Now, whatever happened to Duran Duran? Well, the lead singer, Simon Le Bon, who is a scooter fanatic, has decided to put pen to paper and come up with this one, the Simon Le Bon scooter. It's beautifully finished in a white sequined jacket and of course he's been very patriotic here with a Union Jack flag. We've got a white leather seat but it's not really going to save his colour very long, is it? It would be more suitable to his wife, Yasmin. Again, a real girly scooter. Mmm, Jasper Conran, well he's taken a break from cutting the cloth and put pen to paper to design this one, the Argyle. Now we all know he's a well-known fashion designer, so obviously he's gave it a fashion look, but it kind of resembles more of a cardigan than a scooter, and I'm certainly not too sure about this colour. But the one funky aspect I did notice is these lovely pearlescent indicators. They look like giant false nails, and he's got the pink ones on the front, and the blue and pink ones at the back. Nice try, Jasper, but closing. Okay, well it's almost time for the auction, but I'm going to stay behind. I don't actually go through those doors with my purse, so uh, I'm going to stay behind and check out these little beauties. More weird and freaky scooters after the break when Louise searches for that ultimate scoot and I get a little more than I asked for. Welcome back to Two Wheels Extra as we rejoin guest presenter Louise Brady at the Sotheby's Scooter Auction trying to find her dream machine. Do you know what? I always fancy myself as a model and I always want to be photographed by David Bailey. Well, he put his camera down for a few days and designed this one. I'll call it the funky furry one. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it kind of resembles a cow in a funny sort of way. But it's going to look great and it's certainly going to turn a few heads around town, but what's going to happen when it gets dirty? Take it to the dry cleaners. <laughs> Louisa, you're now the proud owner of this David Bailey scooter. Are you really into scooters? No, I've never owned a scooter in my life. So you've never ridden one? I have ridden one, but I've never owned one. OK. Are you actually going to take this on the road or are you going to keep it in your lounge? I am going to take it on the road, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just slightly worried about... I wonder whether they've got to put a waterproof raincoat on it, whether it'll, what'll happen when it rains. Mm. It's a bit tricky, isn't it? It's kind of the, the, the type of thing you take the dry cleaners once it gets dirty. I'm not so. sure how they'll manage with that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So how do you feel on a scooter? Are you really confident around town? Because it's very busy in London. Oh yes, I'm very confident, yeah. Yeah, I have no problem. I have someone to drive my scooter for me. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Now this one's been divined by Reese Ifarms. If you don't know the name, he was the star of Notting Hill. Now, it's quite a holy, spiritual kind of scooter. The body is finished in a wood effect brown paint. Um, and a picture of the holy man himself on the side here. And I've certainly never seen stained glass mirrors on a scooter. That was until this evening. I wouldn't exactly go for this one in a hurry, but if you're out to turn heads and you say your prayers on a Sunday morning, then this could be the scooter for you. And what about this one? A handsome star of lock stock and two smoking barrels that Nick Moran decided to put pen to paper for this one. It's called the bullet because it's got these very ingenious bullet holes all the way down the side. It's finished in light blue metallic. It's quite eye-catching, not really a man's colour. But take a look at the windshield here. We've actually got bullet holes in the windshield. Hmm. That might be a little drafty, but it's certainly a scooter for the boy about town. Now, 
I've managed to track down John, who is the designer of all these super little models. John, where did all this come from? Did you help the celebrities choose their designs at all? Or get uh, them no, free basically, room? the um, designs came from the celebrities through Focus PR, and we interpreted it into what you see today, which is pearls, micas, and special paint effects. And uh, they come out good. Did you have to take all the panels off to, to spray them, or do you? Yes, have them basically, on? everything's been taken apart on the bikes. They've been based, completely stripped down, based, and then they've been airbrushed, which you can see, and then pearled, mitered, candied, and then relagged, and then rebuilt back together again, actually. Say if you'd have bought one this evening, would you be inclined to keep it in your lounge? Um, I'd ride it, but I don't think I'd be riding it out in the rain. <laughs> when it comes to auctions, the highest bidder wins. And the scooter of the night, if you like, was the Jasper Conran scooter. That might raise a grand total for £3,600. It was closely followed by the Simon Le Bon scooter, a very classic one, and that one raised £2,400. Again, the Donner Air one, a grand total of £2,400, what did they receive? And the David Bailey, 2200 the Bridget Jones, now that was my firm favourite, with all those girly accessories. And the Reese Ifans, again, all raised a total of £2,200. Nick Moran's Bullet, well, there was a lot of people like that one. Again, most raised £2,200. And the Step Scooter, most raised a grand total of £2,000. So it's clothing time here at Sotheby's. What a great time we've had. And lots of money has been raised for a good cause. So look out for those funky vessels. I'd love to give you lots of tips as to how to ride quickly, how to go round corners fast. But I think to contribute to your own safety, the main advice I can give is be seen. Try and get some bright clothing and then uh, at least the motorist doesn't have an excuse that he never saw you coming. You must be seen, otherwise you've no excuse, you may get knocked off your bike. You know the consequences. Isn't it great how, as you get older, the toys just get better? So you might not remember your first teddy bear, but I bet you remember your first toy train or ride on tractor. And then when you get to 16, you get your first moped. That magic moment, proper grown-up toys, and that's what we're looking at now. 50cc scooters. I can't wait. Woo! Fran, I'm scared. Well, they've certainly got the names for it anyway, Sonic and Slider. They sound like they should both have green hair, laser guns and live in a computer game. But then they are trying to appeal to a younger audience. Of course, there is a child in all of us, so this should be fun. And when you've only got 49 CCs to play with, it has got to come down to style. Image-wise, I think this one looks really mean. And it goes with my lovers. Of course, what she doesn't know is this one's been de-restricted. Hello, speed. And so it's out onto the streets, and Francesca is modelling the lovely Yamaha slider, doing its best to look sinister in matte black. And actually, it kind of does like a stealth scooter. If the SAS used scooters, they'd use these, perhaps with bigger engines, and maybe a gun rack. Mind you, the black leathers look good. Ow! Ow! Thank you. streets, alleyways and mucky little corners where you can turn your moped. I remember being 16 and this is bringing it back. Get out of the way, Fran, and your rope little slider. It might not make that much difference, but when you've only got a tiny, tiny engine, every single little bit makes a huge amount of difference on the road. It might be more rapid, but it doesn't really look as dramatic. The styling, if anything, is a little bit traditional and tame. Still kind of sporty from some angles, and it's very, very easy to use. From 
matte black to canary yellow. Hmm, not sure. Of course, the other thing you did on your moped when you were 16 was race it against another moped with almost exactly the same amount of power. Now, we're not condoning this sort of behaviour. Far from it. It's very naughty. But huge fun. Obviously the pressure was on as we approached the start in our car park track, but once underway, the nerves soon disappeared. Boom, you beauty, and there we have it. It is, after all, down to riding skill, talent, a bit... Oh, thank you. Next week, we go off-roading crazy with the hybrid TDM and the very serious KTM. And then we go back to school to get some much-needed lessons in how to do it properly. I wasn't scared. Back on the tarmac, we'll be putting two speedy scoots through their paces. See you then. <laughs>